Sneakers and Cleats, the podcast. Welcome back to the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. It is Monday, March 11th, also known as Free Agency Opening Today in the NFL. This is episode 83, Matt Roy, Chuck McTinnick, Don Harris on here. Um, it is a wild day in uh, football free agency as the legal tampering period opens, which is an oxymoron. But it's uh, it's open, and uh, the Cowboys are not ready for business. But we'll get to that in a second. How are you guys? How was the weekend? Great. Yeah, no complaints. We're going to get back at it. It's a Monday. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, we got a lot got, going on. Yeah, a lot going on on Monday. You got the Spurs at home tonight. Get to that if we can. Uh, <laughs> and try and fit in as much as we can here in 30, 35 minutes. So, as always, we start with the number game. I, there's not a lot of good 83s. Uh, Andre Reed was the one that came to mind for me for the number, but that's also just because I just watched the uh, four. Where's falls. Ricky Sanders? I just watched the four falls of Buffalo. Great Southwest Texas Bobcat, right? Yep. Ricky Sanders. Had over 200 yards receiving against the Broncos in that Super Bowl. See, never it's my sweet mate. Never Where's worked. Ricky Sanders? And then after that, that Super Bowl, they went to the White House and Ronald Reagan called him out by name and threw him a football and Ricky did a really bad dance. Oh. <laughs> he had his moment, though. He did have his moment. Yep. See, I never would have thought of that. So I got Andre Reed and Wes Welker on here as players. Um, Andre Reed, obviously, Bill's Hall of Famer, lost all four Super Bowls with them in the early 90s. Uh, but when I think of 83, I think of the 83 quarterback class. John, yeah. John Elway, Todd Blackledge, Jim Kelly, Tony Eason, Ken O'Brien, and Dan Marino. Six quarterbacks in the first round. None of them, like, truly busts. They were all, like, had decent careers. Obviously, John Elway, Jim Kelly, and uh, Dan Marino are three of the best of all time. Didn't Elway, uh, Colts had number one pick, and he, he said he, he forced to play a trade. baseball. Yeah, he was a hell of a center, center fielder. Forced his way out of Stanford. Stanford, yeah. correct. Forced his way out of the Colts and in, into the Bronco organization. Uh, the late, great uh, Golden Richards, who passed away in the last month or so, Dallas Cowboy. Touchdown in uh, off the halfback pass in Super Bowl twelve, and our good friend Wayne McGarity wore eighty three for the Cowboys. He sure did. Just eternally naming names that I don't know. Clark um, High School, <laughs> Clark Cougar, and Texas Longhorn Matt, who owns the longest touchdown in the history of the OU Texas Red River rivalry, a ninety three yard TD. Now I know. There you go. <laughs> now I know. Uh, I also got. I'm going to speed through these a little bit because we do have so much to get to. A little bit. Uh, also in 83, the Redskins beat the Dolphins 27-17. to John Riggins was Super Bowl MVP. Mm. Joe Theismann yeah. was the regular season MVP. Uh, Bear Bryant and George Hallis both died in 1983, two football legends. Um, Orioles defeated the Phillies four games to one in the World Series in 83. Sixers swept the Lakers to win the NBA title. Islanders swept the Oilers to win fo, the Stanley fo, Cup. Fo. And Jim Colbert won the Valero that year. So... Moses uh, Malone with the fo fi fo 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 prediction, and they ended up winning a fo fi fo. <laughs> well, he he almost got it right. He almost did. So, and that was uh, Chuck, by the way, eighty three Orioles uh, Phillies. Um, Cal Ripken. I was a freshman in college taking a video editing class, and that was the first music video I ever edited. Nice. It was highlights of the eighty three World Series. Cutting tape to tape. And I think it was a Van Halen song that I used. There, there was no Avid software back then. Everybody it wants was, some! <laughs> oh, it was tape to tape for sure. It was like a three-quarter <laughs> inch. Well, uh, with uh, NFL free agency going on, I don't know why I wrote this rundown at 8.30 this morning, but here's pretty much what we can do to it. Um, <laughs> because in the last 10, 15 minutes, everything has changed. Um, we will try and keep you as up-to-date as possible. Obviously, we're filming this or recording this at 1.40. Don't say anything about the word filming. Um we were doing this in 140. Kirk Cousins just signed with the Atlanta Falcons for four years. There's been a lot of stuff on the Cowboys front. I'll run through that really quick. Dorrance Armstrong going to the Commanders. Tyler Biotish going to the Commanders. Jordan Lewis probably going to the Commanders. Uh, and Tony Pollard signs with the Titans. And um, nobody has signed with the Cowboys yet. So that what do you guys take? What do you guys? Of. What do you guys take from the early actions of free agency? As I keep my phone on uh, and watching Adam Schefter's tweets. Well, I think what I take away from it is um, Dan Quinn is going as a head coach with what he knows, and that may or may not be a bad thing for the Cowboys, because when you're familiar with Biotic and Armstrong and Lewis, you're like, okay, those guys are great. But they may not be. You might just have your blinders on. Well, I think if you're trying to build culture, those are three, three pretty nice pillars yeah. to have. If you're, you know, it's what he did when he got to Dallas. I too. think he brought some of his own guys. Three. But I mean, like Jordan Lewis, 
classy guy yeah. coming back from a major injury. He's going to be great with the press, too. But that guy's a dog. They just went out and got some very, very talented DBs and kind of made him the odd man out. But he was definitely a luxury to have. And good to see that he really came on strong towards the end of the year as that foot got even stronger. Well, we know Biagic likes to fight. He's a dog. And Armstrong, yeah. I think, was very underrated as yeah. a cowboy. The one that happened first today was the Tony Pollard deal. Um, he leaves three years, $24 million to go to the Titans, obviously replacing Derrick Henry. They will not re-sign Derrick Henry. He partners up with Tajay Spears in Tennessee. I think that's more money than I thought he was going to get. Me too. $8 million a year for three seasons is a little bit more than I thought he was going to get. And I thought that that was actually kind of in the range for the Cowboys. Maybe $7, $8 million. That's less than the franchise tag was last year. Me too. So when I saw that he's signing somewhere else for $8 million, it made me think, oh, so the Cowboys just don't want to pay the running back position. That's what I got from it, That's too. exactly what I thought of. Well, we'll see. Or did Tennessee overpay? Because, I mean, the story was out there that – if the, sorry, the numbers sorry, were the, close. The Eagles just signed to Saquon Barkley. Okay. Mm, another player wow. off the board. But if – How much? I don't know. But if the Keep going. I'll get it for you. In a never second. mind. No, I had a train of thought, and you cut me off. I know. I'm sorry. To hell with you, Matthew. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to Adam Schefter this. <laughs> no. Tony, po- Tony Pollard. <laughs> there's only one of him, and there's three of us. Tony, Tony Pollard. I forgot what I was going to say. All right. Well, uh, Saquon just signed to the Eagles for three years, 37.3. Seven five million dollars, so roughly twelve and a half, thirteen a year. Um, obviously, that was never in the Cowboys' price range. But Saquon now going to the Eagles takes him off the board for the Texans. And Nick Casario was rumored to be really aggressively pursuing Saquon. So I'll be interested to see now what avenue the Texans go down. Chuck, what what avenue do you think the Texans go down now? With now Josh Jacobs already off the board, he's going to your uh, Green Bay Packers. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> I mean, why? Aaron Jones can only do so much. Well, I know, and he's not been available every week, but I don't know. It just seems like money could have been better spent than to have a one-two punch. But it's a pretty damn good one-two punch to have, I suppose. The the Texans are the one team that have cap space enough to go after Henry. Exactly, and that's why I'm a little confused about uh, Saquon, because they really wanted Saquon in in Houston. And they have the cap space, they have the draft picks, they have the young quarterback on a young quarterback salary, they have the flexibility there. So I'm kind of surprised that they didn't get Saquon, because they have more to spend than anybody else. Maybe they got something better. I mean, maybe they, maybe they get Derrick Henry. Who knows? So that's that's the next question is now that the Cowboy, the Cowboys have been rumored and linked to Derrick Henry for weeks no, and months now. They're not, not going to pay that. Jerry said he's not going to pay that. But I think it also just told us by obviously Tony signing somewhere else and then we see how much Saquon's getting. Uh, Derrick Henry's probably going to get somewhere in between those two. So now we pretty much know the Cowboys are not going to be going after Derrick Henry. I mean, it, at least that's what the tea leaves read to me, right? Yes, that's what Jerry's been saying but, from his bus. Is you know we're we're not going to have one guy take up three players' positions. So Henry would take up a bunch. Yeah, Henry would take up ten to twelve million dollars a year. I'm going to guess. Yeah, and you still got to pay eighty eight for sure this year, and then you got to think about paying eleven. It also begs the question: what does it? What does an ideal free agency look like for the? Uh, for the Cowboys this season, I mean, you're already you've already lost three key contributors from last year. Dorrance Armstrong was really good. They, they didn't up want Biotic back. They had no plans to resign. Still, Biotic. Dorrance Armstrong really good up front in an already messed up and weak D line because of your horrible run defense. Um, you now lose Biotic, who whether they didn't want him back or they did, you're losing the center of your uh, the center of your offense, and then you're losing your lead running back. So all you have right now is Rico. No, all you have right now is Deuce Vaughn because I think Rico is also a free agent. So, so they have to do something in this running back room. Sure, they will. They got some money. They're still, they're still, they're a step behind. They're still clearing the Zach Martins of the world, figuring out what they're going to do with Dak. Uh, what are they going to do if they? Um, they're going to release somebody after June first to clear more cap space money. Michael yeah, Gallup. thirteen. Michael Gallup. So, they're it, they're just a, a step behind when it comes to getting the money first. And then signing the free agent. That and plus, this they do what they've done the last couple of years. Just let this free agent frenzy die down a little bit. There's going to be a lot of guys looking for jobs that will be willing to work for less. Aren't you a little surprised that they didn't try fight harder to keep Tony, though? No. Really? Wasn't physical enough. Jer- Jerry said, I mean, it wasn't even reeling tea leaves. Jerry 
was very blatantly PO'd at McCarthy and Quinn after the Packers game because we can't stop the run and we can't run. And one reason they couldn't run more effectively was because I think Tony Pollard was pretty much one-dimensional. And, I mean, he's a good back, but he couldn't get the tough short yards. He just didn't have the physicality, um, the hammer. Yeah, Rob Thompson, uh, our friends over at the SA Sports Star, said it this morning on on their show. That you need someone who can go get you a yard. And yeah. Tony Pollard, at his best, could not go get them a yard. Well, at his best, he could, but after the injury, it was a little suspect. But he, you know, he, he had his moments towards the end. I can see why the Titans are giving him the money because he's going to be great in the room. He's a pro's pro. But yes, they need somebody who's more consistent in picking up the yard. Yeah, this is nothing against Tony as a person. Just as a player, he, he wasn't exactly what they needed last year. He wasn't the banger that they needed, with, that they lost with uh, that they lost with Zeke. I think he was more than a change of pace, scat back, which is what everybody pigeonholed him in when they had Zeke. But he was less than the hammer, Josh Jacobs, Aaron Jones, Derrick Henry. Zeke Elliott, and they, they need that. Well, he back. was a pretty damn good hammer the second to or two years ago when he uh, and Zeke were sharing the load. In fact, it was obvious who was, was the best quick, player on the team. Yeah, he was quick. He was the, the best hole. offensive weapon two years yeah, ago. Yeah, ask the 49ers. All right, um, that's true. Let me ask you this: the Falcons are signing Kirk Cousins. Let me give you the give me an over or under whether you think this is too much or too little on his contract. Four years, $180 million. Oh, this guy's made so much money playing 40, football. $45 million a year, only $50 million guaranteed for Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. Well, I mean. Too much, too little. It's about right if the Cowboys are going to give Dak 57. At least. Yeah, I mean, I'd I guess. Say, I think the... Dak's the Mayfield number. I think Dak's $30 million a year. Dak's going to get double that. I know. I know. If, if Kirk Cousins is getting 45. God, Kirk Cousins. What's 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 God the grudge against man. Kirk It's Cousins. just good, clean love. I don't I don't have anything against him, honestly. <laughs> it's just amazing that you can have a resume like his, where he gets most of his yards when they're getting blown out, and he's won some ball games and he's good, but the money that this guy has made in his career, more power God to him. God bless him. Packers just lost John John Runyon as well. He's going to the Giants. I'm just updating as I get so as I as I see tweets. Okay. I'm just updating I know. everything we've, as I go. We've all, I've already felt that in real time, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I really Jeez, didn't mean to sure. cut you off earlier. Oh no, you did. But it let, was, let if us it wasn't never Saqu let that happen again. If it wasn't Saquon, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> what Matt so. doesn't understand working with two guys our age is if you cut us off, we're not going to remember what yeah, we were talking no about. Back I, it, to it. it was right there. <laughs> this was going to be the greatest podcast ever. <laughs> Speaking of which, thank you to everyone who listened to our last podcast. It was the it is the second most downloaded episode nice. we've ever had, episode eighty two, talking about Victor and his uh, uh, not being disgruntled, but everyone in the that, national media saying he's well, disgruntled. Well, that, that's because Bob Gambert and the web team put out a misleading headline. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. Anyway, is uh, Wimby leaving the Spurs? Getting tired of the Spurs? Just asking questions. And then, just ask a question, <laughs> it's a fair and question. then we take we take the heat on the comments. Whoever posted this needs to be fired. <laughs> How many times should I have been fired? Uh, I think he's doing a great job. He's um, the master clickbaiter. Anyway. Um, it's his thank job. You, thank you to everyone who listened. I hope they enjoyed the episode, and hopefully this one does equally as well or better. Um, did, did you? Hey, we got a question. Were you clear? Yeah. Uh, Riojas asks if there's any updates on Gallup. Gallup's going to be released. He's going to be a post-June 1 cut. So they're gonna they're gonna yeah they've got him. like a week yeah they're gonna designate him for release or they're gonna trade him they're probably good. they might his get agent has been given permission to seek a trade yeah they might get a fifth sixth seventh round pick for him or if they can't negotiate a trade then they'll release him post June first so they can split up his uh, cap number over two seasons instead of taking a nine million dollar cap hit this year and we got a question from uh, Armando Gonzalez th the third uh, does Tyler's loss to today change the Cowboys draft plans I would think center now becomes a big need or is that a position better addressed in free agency I think offensive Thanks. I think offensive line is going to be a big issue for them on the in the draft anyway they already lost Tyron Smith he's not going to be coming back you have a whole left tackle unless you move Tyler Smith over so you're going to have a, a, a hole at either left guard or left tackle 
So then now you're missing Biotish. So, I mean, maybe you can fill it in with one of the young guys who played last year. But they're going to have to draft O-line regardless. Right? Amen. Yeah, you know, there's there's going to be guys out there. I mean, the Titans just released their center, from what I understand. I mean, they're going to be players. They're going to be more players than there are jobs available. So I think it's wise that the Cowboys are sitting this early part of the frenzy out. This isn't abnormal for the Cowboys, though. They they oftentimes don't take part in the initial frenzy, for lack of a better yeah. term, of free agency. Why Why do you think that is that they just don't do that? I think you've got to just really, really, really like the player. I mean, the Packers get accused of the same thing, but every time they've gone all in on a guy, like when they got Woodson, I can think of a couple other guys, they didn't miss. Now, at the time, you're, you know, they're paying them these huge dollars – and you're thinking, ah, what are they doing? This is going to be a cap sucker. And then at the end of the day, you go, well, they didn't whiff on Woodson. That's When's the last sure. Amari Cooper, the last big one the Cowboys went after. Well, they tra- traded they for traded him, for, yeah, they they traded him for from him. the Raiders. Um, and we're react- we're reacting to most of these in in real time for everybody. So these are all of our initial thoughts. Yeah, as, spitballing. Yeah, as I tell, uh, as I interrupt, uh, Chuck. Uh, yes, <laughs> so I'll, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> Sorry, we'll hug it out later. Um, what were you talking about? <laughs> so I don't remember the moves that the Eagles are making are kind of interesting, though. It, it. I always just whenever I see a move from either the Giants, the Commanders, or the Eagles, I always just think a team hasn't repeated in the in the uh, East in 18 years. So now I'm thinking, okay, which team is going to win the NFC East next year? As we know that the Cowboys won't, not because the Cowboys haven't done anything, but only because it never happens that you repeat as champion. So I'm like, okay, the Eagles are signing Saquon. Does this mean they have the next spot? But then they lost Jason Kelsey. They lost Fletcher Cox. This is like a a turning of the tide for the Philadelphia Eagles, which in turn creates a problem for the Dallas Cowboys. We'll see at the end of the day. I mean, the Cowboys' priorities are their big three. And, you know, you fill out you – know, who the hell is Tyler Biotic, right? I mean, you, you'll fill out your roster and you'll fill out your lineup with guys. That's a big get, Saquon Barkley, for Philadelphia. At least it's splashy if he stays healthy. But, again, the Cowboys' priorities have to be Dak, CD, Micah, a running back. Everything else takes care of itself in time. I always just think as well – uh, Philly signing Saquon is basically signing him away from his prior team. Do you think that, that that was part of the motivation as well? It's like, you know what? Screw them. Let's get their running back. Anytime I see a division move, I think of the, you know, like just like Dan Quinn at the commanders, what he's doing with the Cowboys free agents right now. You're thinking, hmm, inside the division, going to be interesting. Yeah. And, you know, will they do something early or will they wait? I mean, there are players out there. They need a linebacker bad. They need somebody that's going to fit into that, you How know, that, that that Mike linebacker role. And, you know, that Kendrick's guy that has got ties to the D coordinator from their days in Minnesota, he's out there, big, physical, strong football player. You see that a yeah. lot of times, like even in college now, you see like if a, if a coach leaves, he tries to bring players with him. Uh, I think you saw that with uh, Shadur Sanders and and uh, Dion up at uh, Colorado. And you, you see that a lot, and you see that in the NFL too. When uh, Sean Payton signed with the Broncos, he brought over basically every New Orleans Saint that he could ever think of um, that wasn't nailed down. Every coach that he would ever do, you see that a lot. So I'm not surprised that Dan Quinn has gone after these guys uh, in the NFC East, but. When you see like three guys signed almost immediately from the Cowboys to the Commanders, it is still a little jarring to see. Oh, so you really know what his plan was here? Yeah, and you know, again, it's addition and subtraction. You're adding those guys and you're taking them away from the Cowboys. And again, I'll throw this out there: not necessarily maybe a bad thing for the Cowboys. I think the Biotish loss is a little bit more than you're than you're giving him credit for. I never liked him. What? <laughs> I didn't think he was. I didn't think he was all that. I think he got thrown into the job because, you know, at at the time that he, uh, who did he replace? Travis Frederick, wasn't it? He yeah. came in right after yeah. Travis Frederick mm-hmm. left. I, I think he I mean, was that's serviceable. A tough, that's, those are also tough shoes to fill. Did he ever make a Pro Bowl? That I don't think so. No. I mean, I don't think he was. The Pro Bowl's a joke now, though. So. I think he was an he's an average in NFL starting center. So Easily he's, replaceable. So you think he's not hard to replace? So out of the three, the guys, or let's call it four, because they're probably not going to bring back Jordan Lewis. Out of those four guys, which one's the biggest loss? Armstrong. 
He's the hardest to replace. I don't know about hardest to replace, but he he put up numbers. He he was a force on that defensive front. And Jordan Lewis is really good, but he ended up being a backup. Do you think that they let Armstrong walk because they already had this crap uh, running rush defense, and they're like, you know what, we need a bigger body know. in the middle. We need a, we need to change the style of defense here to get it more ugly. And a little bit, maybe well, less it, finesse. It could be just as simple as they like the player. They just don't like what it's going to cost them now that they're in the open market. They've got a side CD lamb. And they're, <clears throat> what they're going to do is take a million from this guy and two million from that guy and three million for this guy. So instead of paying this guy six, we're going to get a guy for four. Instead of paying Tony Pollard eight, we're going to get a running back for six. All those savings – Adds up to 10, 12 might be the difference in getting CD done or not. I mean, I would let CD walk and say, sign the other guys, but that's just me. Um, that no ain't more. happening. And it's not going to happen, but I, I would like it to. Uh, that's enough for a free agency for now until I interrupt one of these two again <laughs> You're good. Here, in, here in a little bit. Uh, let's talk about the Spurs real quick. Um, the Spurs defeated the Warriors 126-113. Uh, on Saturday, they play the Warriors again tonight with a little bit more uh, reinforcements uh, since they were down Vassell and Wemby on Saturday. Uh, but no Wemby, no Vassell, no problem for him. I mean, that, that was one of the more impressive showings that I've seen from this young court. Agree. They play differently when Wemby's not in there. You can run a little more. You got a little more movement. So it, was a, it looked to me like some guys were trying to show some things that, hey, we're not a one-man team, and it really showed over these last couple games. Steph's out. Was out, going to be out again tonight. Um, Warriors are shorthanded too. It was very impressive. Malachi Branham has really come on. The Barlow kid, like like Chuck's saying, I think um, I think they really got the message after the All Star break that <laughs> this is your last twenty games. If do you want to be on the Wimby wagon next year? Everybody's being evaluated, and nobody's safe. Not even Devin Vassell. So. Uh, I think they're all in tryout mode, and, um, and and they shared the ball, as Chuck said. They shot the three. When the ball goes in from three point, you have a much better chance to win, and they haven't, they've been a horrible three-point shooting team all year, and they went in the last few games. That was one thing I wanted to ask you about is which young guys are, you, are showing you the most lately? Like, we've seen – they've started playing a lot better. They've won more games. They've been in a lot more games. Even the Houston game that where Wemby tweaked his ankle and stuff, I think they showed that they are still that competitive driving team. I th I've been kind of impressed with, with uh, Malachi lately. Malachi and Blake Wesley, I think, are, are really showing that they can be quality role players on a good team. I just like the fact that it show, it's showing more often than not lately that they're willing to play both ends of the court for longer periods of time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Barlow is going to be a guy that's going to be on this roster three years from now. Um, I'm still jury out on Devin whether they – I mean, Devin's really good. And I could see him being the third or fourth best option um, if they go out and get an all-star to pair next to Wimby. Sohan's the guy that I'm, I'm just he, – he, he can be great and he can be awful. And I just don't know – which one he's going to end up becoming? I saw, I read an article from, uh, who was it? It was on ESPN about uh, Shohan and his his randomness of how he plays. It's either like he's so good or he's terrible. There's no in between. It's the beauty of the randomness of Jeremy Shohan. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, just I just want him to capture a little bit more of the good and stop with the random turnovers or the the weird fouls or the bad plays. It's like, dude. Just, or just, the awkward missed layups. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's the randomness of his game is so infuriating. He, he's a great, great athlete with so many great uh, attributes, length, jumping ability, defensive mindset, quickness. But then he's just not a skilled basketball player, which you take a chance on him, you think you can teach him some of that. They, they've done it with others that they've had. Kawhi Leonard couldn't shoot at all when they first got him. And his shooting has gotten better, especially his three-point shooting gotten better. But I just don't know. I don't know what the future holds for these guys. So if I was to ask you right now today that you get to keep three players from this roster, excluding Wemby, 
what three players would it be that you would want to take into the future? Now, into the do future? we take into consideration what kind of money they're going to make? No. Okay. Excluding the money that they're making now or in the future. Okay, then it's Devin, it's Sohan, and it's Barlow. Chuck? All I can think of is Charles Bassey. Just really? give me somebody that's going to play their ass off all the time, 24-7, both ends of the floor. Charles Bassey. Why not Keldon, Don? Because I think we've, we've seen enough of Keldon to know what he is, and I think at the price tag that he's going to be at, he's going to be expendable. He's going to be the guy that's included in a trade. I like Fair. Keldon a lot. I like him a lot. He's a good player. But I think, I think we've seen his ceiling. And I don't think we've seen Devin and Sohan ceiling. I would say give me Jeremy, give me Devin, and I. But I would take uh, Trey. I think that Trey would be one of those I guys too. that I would. Yeah. Keep. I think I. I just like I like how he plays. He knows exactly what he is. He knows exactly what he can contribute, and he does the good. It looks like basketball thing. when he's on the floor. Yeah. He does the little things well, and he knows exactly who he is and who he has to get the ball to, because he's not the superstar. He, can... he knows he's not the superstar, and he gives the ball to the superstars. Yeah. That's so, true. I think that Trey is, has been. If they started Trey all year and didn't start the the Jeremy Shohan They'd experiment, have 10 more wins. at least, at yeah, least, I agree. I mean, I, Trey is just he's a very good basketball player, and he's also great in the community here. All these guys are. But here, here's you know. how weird I am that you just brought that up and said that the Sohan point guard experiment. I, when you said that, it triggered the fact that last night, when I got up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom. I was dreaming about why they stayed with the Sohan experience for so long. <laughs> Who else dreams of stuff like that? And I was mad, and Pop was mad at me or something, and I was questioning why they stuck with the Sohan experiment for so long. So Thursday, I think we need to get a psychologist on, it's and weird. she needs to evaluate what your dreams are meaning. <laughs> it's weird. Because that, that's pretty <laughs> odd. It's weird. No, you can't help it, no, man. It's, that's that's where it's, it's at. It's definitely weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this week we got a... Uh, uh, I got. I've, we have a guest coming on on Thursday, so you guys won't be here on Thursday. So I want to ask you guys this uh, now: the I thirty five series is going to be playing uh, this week in Austin. They have the the one trip that the defending finals champs make to Texas or to San Antonio. It's going to be in Austin, Texas, and not in San Antonio. Denver only plays here once all year. I believe so. Yes. No, can't be. I'm pretty sure. And they'll probably rest everybody. They're a Western Conference team. they got to play two games. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what happened at the beginning. That's what I read at the beginning of the season. But I'll go check that. But anyway, that's weird. you still have the uh, defending finals champs not coming to your home. You're com- going to your second home, I guess, in Austin. Um, give me a quick two minutes on what you make, each of you, make of these uh, I-35 series games and uh, kind of s- stop all of the rumors that uh, people – what? That, that, that the Spurs be, are leaving. Can, there can't be those anymore. They're building a new arena at the Institute of Texas Culture site. Come on. It's over. I get Tony Gonzalez and those guys are campaigning on that stuff, trying to rally people up a year ago. It's over. They're not going anywhere. They got a $500 million rocket lock on Terra. They're going to raise the Institute of Texas Cultures and build them a brand new arena right there. It's over. Calm down. Yeah, you can't blame a team for. Trying to spread the brand. And Austin is a huge television market. I can't believe it's a top 40 television market now. I mean, I can by looking at the skyline, obviously. It's 33. But, no, we're 33. No, I sorry. They're 38 or some 38. Yeah, we're 33, you're right. Sorry. Somewhere in there. The, yeah, I, I heard they were going to rename the team the Teslas. Is that true? Yes. <laughs> the Teslas. That's yeah. right. There's the, that. It's the, it's the Austin Musks. So, yeah, I mean... <laughs> What's the problem with playing a couple ball games? It all looks like a basketball court on TV. I mean, they're playing in Austin. I mean, I get why Woo! I get why they wouldn't want to, but I don't think it's like it's not like the NFL where you take one out of nine home games or one out of right. eight home games away. You're taking one out of forty one or two out of forty one. I mean, if they did half of their season up there, I would have an issue with it. But two games up in Austin, I don't think it's a big deal. I do think it's a big deal that I liked it last year better when they had Portland do it or a worse team. I would prefer to get the San Antonio fans to see Nikola Jokic against Wemby instead of the Austin fans. That is the argument that I buy. Sure. That I get. That I get. Or if it's, you know, if Brooklyn was any good or if it was Giannis's one and only, I get that. Yeah. For sure. But, you know, as I said over a year ago when all this stuff was 
being hashed out by the Tommy Calverts of the world about, you know, ah, the Spurs, they want to leave. Uh, where did Kareem Abdul-Jabbar break the NBA all-time scoring record? Don't ask me. I didn't even know the people you were talking about earlier. You don't know Kareem? <laughs> no, I do. I, I was saying when you were telling me about He 83. broke the record against the Jazz in Las Vegas because the Jazz played two or three home games a year in Las Vegas. Where did the boss, the boss, the mighty Boston Celtics, the Bill Russell, John uh, Havlicek, Bob Cousy, greatest franchise of all time, for a solid decade, they played three to five home games a year in Hartford, Connecticut, to spread the brand. It's not a new thing. And it does, were the Boston Celtics ever going to leave the vaunted garden to go to Hartford? No. So everybody just needs to, oh, they're going to go, they're going to take our breakfast tacos with them too. Then I'd riot. I don't, I don't then know. Then I'd riot. <laughs> Stupid. If they're going to take Taco Palenque too, I will fight somebody in the streets. Taco Palenque is not San Antonio's. I think it's from the Valley. I was just. It was the first Mexican restaurant that came in my head. Okay. Laredo. Luis weighing in. We just had this call. Lanky expert. Of course, Luis knows <laughs> yeah. this. Um, <laughs> Uh, to further, this is puro Laredo. Two things, real quick. To further your point, they, d- uh, Denver does come back to San Antonio the second to last yeah, game. Of the, yeah, second to last game of the season. To further your point, with uh, this Kirk Cousins deal, uh, three hundred and thirty million dollars guaranteed is what he's made in his career after this contract that he just. It's had. Good to be Kirk. Cousins. It's good to be a medi- It's good to be a mediocre yeah, quarterback, man. And, and that goes a long way when you're buying Joseph A. Bank and you know the Fox logo stuff. He's, see his wardrobe. He just wears like casual. Yeah, stuff. he wears like. I mean, he, yeah, he goes to I mean, Coles. Give him his Coles. credit. I mean, he's obviously a better than average quarterback. He's the Coles dad. Three hundred thirty yeah. million dollars total. Three hundred thirty million dollars will buy you a lot. Dockers. Uh, It'll buy you a lot of Dockers. Cousins, <laughs> a lot of Dockers. <laughs> It'll buy you a lot of plaid uh, t-shirts. <laughs> Did, didn't he win cousins. the quarterback uh, the spe- Netflix special? Quarterback? Yeah, Did, yeah. Uh, he I, won that, right? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, like him and uh, Patrick Mahomes came off looking amazing after that thing. And uh, you know, looking at looking at that Atlanta team as competitive as they are, he might be the missing link for all we know. I mean, so, you look at that roster, and they you just need one person right? to be able to get it to the skill players. That's right. it: Bijan, Drake, London, Kyle Pitts. Now you put yeah. Kirk Cousins into there; he might not have yeah. the scrambling ability after his Achilles injury. But might not need it. Yeah, all he has to do is get it to the guy. That's all you right. need to do. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, that's all we got for you on this edition of the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. There are no more signings as of two oh nine p.m. So uh, when you hear this, you'll be hearing instant reaction that we got as we were uh, riffing and interrupting and whatnot. So we do have a special guest, excuse me, coming up on Thursday. Um, Anthony Totri from PHNX, the Sun Devils podcast. He is in town. Uh, and he has decided and agreed to come on to the Sneakers and Cleats podcast. So we will tell him how much better uh, Texas sports are than Arizona sports. So we will let him know that. That's all we got for in the Sneakers and Cleats podcast today. Remember and download, rate, review, subscribe, give us a five star rating, tell a friend, tell an enemy. We will see you right back here on Thursday with Anthony Totri. Until then, everyone, have a good week.